Hi, guys. Hello. <sighs> We're a man short today. Yeah. She'll be back. Don't worry. She needs some time. Anywho, welcome back to another episode of Code Switching Naturally. I am AJ. I'm the letter after P. That works. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, how are thou's? What's 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 up? Um, I'm busy. You busy? Yeah, booked and booked and busy, which we love, but also we's tired. I was tired, boss. Yeah, I, was tired. Yeah. I was real tired now, both. Yeah. Um. But yeah. No. So we like, like the booked and busy. A it's bit. true. Mm-hmm. You know, most of it I enjoy. Mm-hmm. Some of it I'm obligated contractually. This is you know, true. That's work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah no. But it do be bringing in a paycheck, and as I found out, rudely, um, bills don't give a fuck about your feelings. So. Not at all. Actually, feelings are not a requirement to pay your bills. So, no. unfortunately, they sure aren't. I mean, you can't pay in feelings. So. No, they don't. They don't want that. They actually get pretty angry yeah. at you for that. Apparently, emotional currency is not a thing. It's I've, not a thing. I've been misled. But y'all trying to do electronic currency though, right? Mm. Anywho, NFTs and shit. Right. Mm. Okay, so I have I have I have an L of the week. Yes, okay, yes. I have I have a thing, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's very irritating and frustrating. Ooh, frustrating, for you, yes. frustrating for you people. Okay, so there's a couple things that are nonverbal cues to leave people the f alone. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. and those nonverbal cues are not limited to and include. Headphones, mm-hmm. someone eating food mm-hmm. actively, like there's a fork going into their mouth. Mm-hmm. Don't come asking questions. Don't come asking me shit if I am eating mm-hmm. and I have headphones in my face. Mm-hmm. Leave me. I said what I see. I know. What I, I left it. I stopped. I stopped. You continue. You're doing great. I feel you on that. Truly. Because I done had like three people interrupt my food this week alone right. to ask me questions. And we know how you are about your food. I know. that's It's a sacred time. I get it. Like, hey, I'm doing something. Something that will keep me from killing you. So then maybe. Then to come too close. <laughs> like, back up 50 feet, bitch. Why is you so close? Leave me alone. <laughs> Or personal, or personal space is another thing that we could really go on a rant about. I'm not going to today, but. Because why am I just walking in the door and you stopping me to ask me questions? <laughs> right. I have just arrived. I um, like literally just walked in the door. I haven't even put my bag down. I have not. Mm-hmm. I have not put my computer back together mm-hmm. and put it back on its mount so I can be a productive citizen of the world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's 902. Right. And you want to ask me questions. I normally don't like talking to people before 10 o'clock. So the fact that I gave you a nice response when you stopped me at 9.02, mm-hmm. I still have crusted my eyes because I'm still waking up. <laughs> it's a blessing that I even made it to the fucking office without falling asleep at the wheel. Because I'm not fully awake. I am not a morning person. Don't talk to me. But again, feelings don't matter. I mean, they do. Feelings matter. Just oh, they're not, very valid. Just, just not when they come to paying bills. And not when it comes to, like, being a team. Mm, no, I feel like it just matters especially. <laughs> because, like, <laughs> listen, if you don't come right, I'm going to hurt yours. So just take that, <laughs> take that into account. Mm-mm-mm. You remember COVID times? When people had to stay at least six feet away. They didn't do that, and it no. still drove me nuts. No, trust me, I know. I work at a gas station. People would be up on it, like, just like, hello. I I'm like, it. sir. I hate it now, because I'd be looking at people like, if you don't back up, and then they get the hint, and they back up. Why are you so close? Listen. Why can't I feel your breath on my neck? Like, if I am feeling uncomfortable for that person, you're too close. You need to back up. Please. 
and Here's like Becky. completely don't that's be all. don't that's be all. Dickhead. That's all I ask. Thank you so much. Okay. So, it's not that hard. I think I feel a little better. Okay, good. Just a little bit. Don't don't they help? Yeah, a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I just want y'all to know. Also, um, should I should I intervene? Also, maybe you don't. Maybe don't. Yeah, maybe don't. <laughs> <laughs> maybe don't do that. <laughs> maybe. We gave full warning. <laughs> I said maybe don't, and I was correct. I was correct. <laughs> Uh, and I know you still watching. Let me catch you outside. <laughs> so, anywho, it's still Women's History Month, and we've had this week was International Women's Day on one of these days this week. I can't remember the day of the week. Don't ask me. We're giving it the whole month. Don't give a fuck. Exactly. And so we thought because um, how many more weeks do we have in March? Like. Isn't it like the, the third week this is going out, right? This is the third week. Mm-hmm. Today is Friday. It will be it will be Friday the 17th, so. Yeah. Hope you're wearing green. Um. Yeah. Oh, shout out to my best friend. Happy birthday on Tuesday, bitch. <laughs> uh, his birthday was just Tuesday because you're watching this on a Friday, so happy birthday. Anyway, um, so we decided we're going to do forgotten women in history. So this is going to be a history lesson. If you don't want to learn about your historical figures that are bliggity, bliggity, black, black, you can all turn this off now. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Yes. You got the rant, you know, you, you got all of the things, you know, you you got me saying something that's not my name. We said, Ooh, we didn't say good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night. There you go. Oh, we didn't say that. The dark bargain is fulfilled. You're welcome. All right. Like, so, comment, bye. Um, so, uh-huh. who are we starting with? Um, given the uh, current situation that we have going on in these United States. Niggas are stupid. Uh, correct. Um, I felt that it was important to ensure that our uh, black trans individuals um, were mentioned um, because while y'all are trying to erase them, we will not forget. So... I mean, while y'all are trying to erase all of black black history, black people, people of color in general, we not having it. Absolutely. So... so oh yes, go ahead. Um, Marsha P. Johnson, the mayor of Christopher Street... Uh, one of the uh, out um, loud voices uh, in New York during the, you know, the AIDS crisis, the 80s into the 90s. Um, She was, you know, part of, you know, the Stonewall. Give more facts about her. Let's tell us more. What started uh, in, I'm going to pull it up. Pull it out. Pull it That's out. why we have these beautiful devices because we gonna give y'all some facts about. Yeah, we gonna facts. we gonna give you the tea. Make sure you send me a picture of her because I do okay. not. I don't have one of her yet. Absolutely. Uh, she was born in 1945. Mm-hmm. Um, like two of the big names were Marsha P. Johnson uh, and Sylvia uh, Rivera. Um, she co-founded. Uh, the Street Transvestite Action Revolutionaries, a.k.a. STAR, mm-hmm. uh, with uh, Miss Rivera. Uh, she was also a founding member of the Gay Liberation Front. Um, like, she posed for Andy Warhol, so, like, she was out on the scene. Come on, outside. Absolutely. Um, she was a welcoming presence in the streets of Greenwich Village. Like, everybody knew her, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. She... Again, uh, she was known as uh, the mayor of Christopher Street, you know? So she was a recognized face there. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, so from 1987 through 1992, uh, she was an AIDS uh, activist with uh, ACT UP, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, ACT UP, Fight AIDS, that was, you know, what we were... uh, Excuse me, did I do something wrong? (laughs) Uh, She passed in 1992. 
Uh, okay, don't smile at that. She did. <laughs> Shit, I'm sorry. <laughs> She's smiling because that's her birth year, but in the context, that was rough. That was terrible. That was I'm so rough. sorry. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Okay. That was rough. No, she. I'm sorry. You know, she is one of the names that is you know synonymous with, you know, the the Stonewall uh, riots and like what started gay pride. You know, so mm-hmm. like, put some respect on her name, please. And, Period. you know, let's not erase our trans brothers and sisters. They're here. They're just trying to live. So, like, you know, don't, don't, be, be, a, don't be an asshole. You know what I'm saying? You have one, but don't be one. <laughs> you can have one, just don't be one. My goodness. Ain't that a, ain't that a word right there? Mm-hmm, it sure is. Okay, so our next forgotten woman in history is Miss Alice H. Parker, who was... The um, the woman who invented a furnace powered by natural gas. Her goal was to offer a central heating solution that was more efficient than wood or coal. Um, she received the patent for her invention in December of 1919. Um, her invention was never really adopted exactly to her specifications, but it did resemble the modern gas furnace models. Um, it allowed people to customize temperatures in different rooms through a heat exchanger and a series of burners and ducts. Her gas powered um, furnace inspired more intervention. Well, inventions, not interventions. I'm sorry. It's the therapist <laughs> in me. Don't mind me. Every time I see INV, I automatically think <laughs> mm-hmm. intervention, intervention. Sure, sure, sure. and it's terrible mm-hmm. um, in the heating industry, such as the thermostat and forced air furnace. Um, she did attend HBCU and um, graduated with honors at Howard University um, when it was rare for a woman, uh, especially a woman of color, to receive a college education. Um, she has zero experience in the particular trade, too. Um, she just designed the furnace based on the idea that natural gas was a safer, more flexible, and more efficient source of fuel than others being used at the time. Um, so, yes, that's Miss Alice H. Parker. Hey. Okay, so who's next? Um, you, just, you, you had Rosetta? Yes, Sister, Sister Rosetta Thorpe. Here we go. Sister Rosetta Thorpe, tell us about her. Uh, Sister Rosetta Thorpe was the godmother of rock and roll. It was. Mm -hmm. Uh, She was a pioneer who influenced everyone from Chuck Berry to Keith Richards. Come on now. Um, Let's see. When Brittany Howard stepped to the mic to induct Sister Rosetta Tharp into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2018, Mm -hmm. the Alabama Shakes front woman exclaimed, it's long overdue. It is. Um, because it absolutely is like. Now I will say she's not to be confused with Big Mama Thornton, mm-mm. who Elvis. Well, I mean Elvis took from her and Big Mama Thornton, but they are definitely two different women. Big Mama Thornton is Willie May, Big Mama Thornton, mm-hmm. and this is Sister Rosetta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's the godmother, and then Sister Rosetta. Uh, Sister Rosetta is the godmother. And uh, Big Mama Thornton is the queen of rock and roll. Yeah, she uh, was the originator of pop gospel uh, yes. and a popularizer of the electric guitar. Yes. Um, so, you know, she definitely was the, the starting point, you know, the, the match that struck a flame. And did. For what we know rock and roll to be. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, she was... Married to a preacher. A preacher man. Mm-hmm. I don't know how, how they got along with her music because, you know, back then they was real saved. They wasn't saved in a good way. They was like really Let's righteous see. and misogynistic, but it's fine. Born in Arkansas. Arkansas. Yeah, Arkansas. Yeah. Arkansas. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she had mastered the guitar by age six. Six. By age That's six. Sickening. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, she attended church conventions alongside her mother, Katie Bell Newbin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's they, a good name. Mm-hmm. Giggity. They soon re- relocated to Chicago, oh, uh, where Mother Bell preached on street corners and in churches, mm-hmm. accompanied by her daughter. Uh, sorry, her mom. 
Uh, wait. Yeah. Hold on. I got to make sure I'm getting it right. There we go. Accompanied by her daughter, she would be con- a constant presence for most of Tharp's life. Mm-hmm. In 1934, Tharp would marry another traveling preacher, Thomas Tharp, who joined the Mother Daughter Act, but it wouldn't last long. Mm-hmm. By 1938, mother and daughter relocated to New York, New York City, uh, where her talent was under. Her undeniable talent quickly landed her a spot at the Cotton Club. Ooh, mm-hmm. she played and in you the know that club. was that was hard to get into as a black. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, so she she just had a lot going on, you know. She's so, a dope woman, but we don't hear about her a lot. It's um, true. Like you hear about Big Mama. Well, of course, because Elvis took most of her music. Mm-hmm. But Elvis stole a lot of people's music, and he was a pedophile. But we're not gonna go there. Ooh-hoo-hoo. Um, Little Richard called her uh, his greatest influence. Mm-hmm. And she was the first to put him on stage. Really? Yeah, she was the first to put Little Richard on the stage. Yeah. That's crazy. That's awesome. I, she said, I play better than a man. She sure did. And that is, uh, that is true sense. She said, can't no man play like me. I play better than a man. And did. <laughs> <laughs> and did. <laughs> Okay, that's great. That's amazing. I yeah, like yeah. I like reading stuff about her. So yeah, look up. Yeah. So if you haven't heard of um, Sister Rosetta Thorpe, make sure you look up her music and kind of like stream it and see what happens. See what you find. Oh, yeah. No, here it is. Okay, now, the reason why I'm like, hey, what's good? In the late 40s, Thorpe moved, uh, formed a very successful and popular duet with a young gospel singer and pianist named Marie Knight. Mm-hmm. They played to large crowds and recorded hit versions of Up Above My Head, Didn't It Rain, and Beams of Heaven, among others. The two also became lovers, okay. an open secret in the gospel world, until a fire in Newark, New Jersey, killed Knight's mother and two of her children. Oh, no. Yeah, the grief and strain proved too much, and the pair split as a duo in late 1950, though they would periodically reunite on stage and on record, including for the duet You Gotta Move, which highlights the gospel call and response technique that later inter- emerged in soul music. Mm. Mm. So we get that, like uh, Stevie, say yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. So yeah, she's dope woman. Absolutely, she's the blueprint, baby. She is the originator. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, so moving right along, we have uh, Sister Edith S. Sampson. Miss Edith Spurlock Sampson was an American lawyer and, and judge and the first black U.S. delegate appointed to the United Nations in 1950. Um, she conceded that black people did not have equal rights in America, but she would say, I would rather be a Negro in America than a citizen in any other world. So, uh, I guess people understood that being black everywhere is a challenge. I mean, it's rough. It's rough everywhere. Um, but yeah, so, and the reason that Miss Edith Sampson came up for me because she was, um, the person that influenced Barbara Jordan in her, in her career and like her joining politics and stuff. Now we all know Shirley Chisholm was the first black woman in the house of representatives and to go into the political mm-hmm. realm of the world. Mm-hmm. But, um, no one talks about Edith Sampson being the first woman in the United nations and how big that is and how important that is to, um, okay. And how important that is to, um, Respect shit out of that mic. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So sorry to mean to. And um, how important it is for for us as black people to understand that, like, we have been trying and consistently been in and out of like the political realm, trying to speak up for ourselves and trying to get a seat at the table. Trying to because you know whether we want to realize it or not, we do need a seat at the table to make the proper and permanent changes. Now. Uh, in the climate today, it seems that it doesn't matter what we do. We're trying to be wiped out, period. So everything that was already done for us to be equal is trying to be undone. By, by people that really shouldn't be doing that. Looking at you, Clarence. My guy. What you doing? I mean, but are we surprised? No, we're not surprised at all. 
But like and then the 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 Durango, deranged person in in the seat of Florida, he's trying to wipe out black people from the state. Period. I mean, I can move. He's trying to get rid of um, all of the D nine here in the state, all mm-hmm. of the Latin and um, all of the Latin pro, like all of the black and brown people of color programs, organizations, resources. He's trying to wipe them completely out of the state. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's also trying to get rid of Democrats. So that too. I mean, not him, but you know, his ilk. Which, so. with the most bass awkwardest logic. You know, it it doesn't make sense. They just want to find other things to complain about and things to do. Um. Okay, so I I hope I say her name right. I'm so sorry if I do not. Um. Mon, Mon, Monemia? Monemia, Monemia McCoy. Hey, y'all. It's AJ. So real quick before we continue with the episode, I know it's a picture of the twins. And yes, we're talking about the twins that's coming up. But like, I don't, I can't find a picture of their mother. There's actually no recollection of a picture of the mother. So yeah, enjoy this information about the twins. Bye. Um, she is, um, she had two, she had seven children, but the story is about her and her twins. They were conjoined twins. Uh, they had all of their own limbs, but was attached at the pelvis. And back then in, um, 1851, they were, um, enslaved. And so they were in constant fear of being separated from their children. And the twins were sold and like basically made to be performance people, um, simply because of them having being joined at the, um, pelvis. And so their mom, she fought endlessly for her children as toddlers. They were sold, stolen and sent to Europe to perform in a staggering act of black motherhood. Um, Anemia traveled there along with the girls' owner and a detective um, where she basically was able to um, like fight to get the rights to keep her children and stuff. So when she when they were reunited in 1850, the court in Birmingham, England, granted full maternal rights to um, Anemia and um, they wanted to. um talk about how profound that was because back then especially if you're enslaved you don't have any rights or legalities to your children to you to where you live to where you stay what you do and so for her to have that um for her to have that like capability and to fight for her children that much um i think that that's kind of dope to really talk about um and also when they returned to the states the girls the twins were able to get education they were able to um they still went out and performed but it was kind of like now it's under like the guidance and the safety of our parents we're not like sold in uh not aligned with our people like right so i think that's they weren't isolated and Mm -hmm. separated like many of our you know ancestors were many of our families were yeah and so basically um it it just to highlight the strength of like black motherhood and how far most mothers are willing to go for their kids and to to really protect not even just because there's a lot of women who will protect kids that don't belong to them so in our neighbor in our community because of how important and how deep we love like our people so i thought that that was a really dope yeah most of the time which is lovely to see okay so who's next mm-hmm. <laughs> uh francis thompson a uh, transgender advocate um from like 1840 by 1876 76 uh, <clears throat> so she was born into slavery in Alabama, mm-hmm. um, but by the age of 26, um, she was, uh, and also she was assigned male at birth. Mm-hmm. Important. Uh, but by the age of 26, Frances Thompson was freed and living according to her own uh, gender identity in a booming black community in Memphis, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, she was living uh, 
breathing, woman, yeah. being her full self. Um, ooh. Uh, during the Memphis riot of 1866, mm -hmm. uh, Thompson and her roommate were uh, robbed and uh, brutalized by several white men, including two police officers. Of course they were. Because, you know, the police has always been corrupt. Um, Thompson and other assaulted women boldly testified uh, at a committee hearing held by the U.S. Congress, uh, and she stated that she and her roommate did not consent. Her testimony became infamous throughout the South and led to 10 years of persecution for her gender identity, harassment, and accusations, uh, including claims that she ran a brothel, which is wild. <laughs> um, she was jailed in 1876 for cross-dressing, dress um, and died later that year, but Gross uh, and Barry note in their book um, that even though behind bars she suffered, but she never lost her fight. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, she answered uh, rude questions about her gender by responding, none of your damn business. Period. <laughs> which, which we love. Um, so seeing even like this was just... I mean, this is 1866, so this mm -hmm. is only a year after the Civil War. Mm -hmm. So, like, she's just recently free mm -hmm. and was able to live her life. So, like, one, let's let's talk about how that's 1866, mm -hmm. which is not in the 2000s. So, it's not new, bitch. Mm -hmm. Like, we've been out here, you know? So... And to see her be able to stand up um, and speak out against wrongs done to her and other women uh, is inspiring. We we wish for happier endings to some of these stories, but the strength is commendable. Um, and we appreciate uh, her fight and her sacrifice, uh, even, to, even to her dying day. So... Thank you. Okay, so the next person is Augusta Savage. Um, she's an artist, born in uh, 1892 and died in 1962. Um, she was actually born here in Green Cove Springs, Florida. Mm. And um, she was very artistic and creative at a young age, but her dad, like, beat it out of her. Um, and so she got married and then gave birth and then her husband passed away. So then she got married again and then the great migration was happening. So she was like, yeah, I'm going to go there. Mm -hmm. My husband. Um, and then she shaved like 10 years off her life and then her daughter became her sister. Yeah. Um, interesting fact there. Mm. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then contributing her ta her talents to the creation of the new black cultural identity during the Harlem Renaissance. Um, so Wait, is that her? Yeah. Oh, she's the new Negro. No, that's not her. She doesn't write the new the new Negro. Uh, she, no, no. So. Mm -mm. Um, Augusta's life and. She, she wrote poetry and hosted black literary um, luminaries such as Dorothy West, Claude McKay, Langston Hughes, and Zora Neale Hurston in her overcrowded apartment while sculpting busts of people in her community, as well as leaders like Marcus Garvey. Um, her greatest accomplishments include traveling to study in Paris, being the first black artist elected to the National Association of Women Painters and Sculptors, mm -hmm. and receiving a commission to create art for the 1939 New York World's Fair. Um, entitled Lift Every Voice, which was the inspiration of what became known as the Black National Anthem at the same time. Hey, yo. Of the same name. Hey, yo. Yeah. Nice. Um, and so it's her ebbs and flows of her life, like losing her husband, um, kind of losing herself because her dad tried to stifle her dad. Oh, it's important to note that her father was a preacher. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he was a Methodist minister at that. Um, in particular, molding objects out of clay from a very early age. She used to like be very big into sculpting. And her father discouraged her 
like from the very beginning. So, you know, kind of trying to find yourself and and do the things. Self you know, yeah, self discovery yeah. is very important. Right. And um, you know, it's important that those stories be told. And so, I think I think that's everybody. That's it. You know what? Quick shout out to France, to, to Paris for taking niggas in. Because yeah. there, there were a lot there of them. There was a lot of niggas There was a lot of Paris. niggas going to Paris. Yeah, no, like, that was legitimately, like, they're like, oh, it's whack over here. <laughs> it's a, right. it's whack over here in the States. I guess we got to, because, like, Eartha Kitt went over there. Yeah, she there did. was Josephine Baker? Uh, I think I so. Yeah, I know. Like, like, there were several, you know, you know, blacks okay. in America. Okay, I love talking about this lady. I have one more. I have one more. Okay. Fannie Lou Hamer. Mm -hmm. um, she's a, She was an American voting and women's rights activist, a community organizer, and a leader in the civil rights movement. She was the vice chair of the Freedom Democratic Party, mm -hmm. which she represented in 1964's um, Democrat, Democratic National Convention. Mm -hmm. um, she was... Of course, it was in Mississippi. So, you know, that says a lot. Obviously. Um, and she was really big in challenging the Democratic Party with black people's participation and how um, it, it just, she was just one of those, like, very fierce and, like, I said what I said and I meant what I meant in order to have more of, like, black women's rights and just voting rights kind of, like, pushed for us to be able to vote and do the things that we do today. And so if you want to hear her speech, I'm not sure if it's on YouTube, but I know for sure that you can, like, look at a analysis of it. So, um... Yeah, that's definitely the last one for me. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it. You got anybody? There's someone that has come to mind, but I don't remember her name. Who are you thinking about? Um, what did she do? There was uh, a, a black woman who was like around during the, the suffragette period mm -hmm. um, who was still like, hey, but what about black women though? And then the white suffragettes were like, <laughs> "Oh no!" Press your face. Uh, so she would like post shit, um, like in the newspaper, uh -huh. just talking cash shit. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a interesting looking man. But yeah, guys. So I hope this was informative. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, is that it? You know, I think that was that was pretty much it. Yeah. This can't be Ella. This this can't be Josephine Baker. This can't be. Ella Baker. It's a Ella Josephine Baker was a civil rights activist and human rights activist. This ain't the same person as Josephine Baker. I don't think so. She was largely behind the scenes organizer whose career spanned for more than five decades. No, that's not the same. Person. Yeah, that's not the same person. She, no, 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 no. This isn't the same lady. Okay. So she was born in 1903 and passed away in 1986. Wow. Okay. Miss Ella Baker, you, your name sound like Josephine Baker, but that's not the same person. So that's all right. But yes, she was, um, ooh, my eye itch. Hold on, y'all. Um, she attended Shaw University in Raleigh, North Carolina, and she continued her education um, at Shaw, like graduating as valedictorian. Um, she was she found people suffering from poverty and hardship caused by the great depression and was introduced to the radical political activism that became her life work in the early 1930s. Um, she 
implemented social improvement. She helped um, organize the Young Negroes Cooperative League, um, which was created to form cooperative groups that would pull community sources um, and thus provide less expensive goods and services to to members. Um, she joined the staff of the NAACP um, in the 1930s as well, and she was first as a field secretary and later as the national director of the NAACP's various branches. Um, so, yeah, she definitely was uh, real big into the efforts and stuff. Um, so, yeah, shout out to you, Miss Ella Baker, because I don't hear about her ever either. Did you find a lady? Uh, no. No, it's okay. Okay, well, it's about that time to go on and wrap this this zone, this good thing on up. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, sorry. It's all good. Let me slip this shut. Oh, that's not actually a composition, but no, it's not. Nice. Thank you. I was wondering, and I was like, why does it look so damn heavy? Because it's, it's a tablet. It's a tablet. I got it. I got it. Because you know, mm-hmm. I like to, you know. Anyway, it's time. For music of the week, music of the week, a a music of the week, music of the week, a a. You go first. Uh, it's float by Janelle Monet. Float. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, she just she just put it out, and the I didn't see there's that. a there's a dance video for it. Mm-hmm. Black as hell. It's beautiful. Mm. It's gorgeous. I love it. I love it. I love it so we much. We love all things black. Mm-hmm. Blackity black and more black. Okay. Um, I need to find the song because I don't know the name of the artist that well. But the version of the song is amazing. It's called Go. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lower and Slower by Cat Burns. Okay. Shout out to, to my Clyde because he be putting me on some like really dope songs hell yeah and um that song is really dope i'll show you in the car right on. but yeah guys um i hope this was a very great history lesson informative and all of the things yeah oh excuse me and uh make sure you like comment share subscribe tell your friends tell your mama now mm-hmm. and um yeah oh wait hey y'all hey how you doing today cool uh I said we were going to talk about it, so we're going to talk about it now. Hey, so um, we love engagement. We want your comments. Thank you so much. But here's the thing. Um, if you if you come with the negative energy, we're going to bring you that same energy. So just be prepared. And the petty will flow because all of us it's really, it's given the day, depends on who's the pettiest. But we're all pretty petty. So just, you know, just remember that, you know, and just gird your loins, ladies and gentlemen, because <laughs> like, because we're not holding back. It's all I'm saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Y'all have a y'all have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your enjoy your weekend. It's Friday. Okay. I hope your weekend is great. <laughs> Bye. Oh, right. Well, sorry. All the YouTube stuff. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Follow mm-hmm. us on Instagram, Twitter, all the things. Yeah. Down below. There's TikTok. Okay. Tiki Talkie. Love you. Bye. Bye.